Hi, this is Scott Liedke. I'm a VFX mentor at Animation Mentor, and I wanted to do a quick uh, tips and tricks session talking about uh, some tips about uh, creating a good background image. We have a project where uh, the students create their own model, and they put it in their own uh, environment and so they go through all the production steps of uh, creating a model, um, surfacing it, um, applying uh, uh, materials, uh, lighting, also uh, creating a match move camera for the environment that they're in, and then of course rendering it out and uh, finishing it in a, in a composite. So one of the uh, key features of that is um, capturing a good environment to put your object in. And I've taught the class a few times, and I've noticed that there's a couple of things that people commonly um, uh, kind of don't think about. And so I just wanted to kind of, um, uh, give, some, give some hints about what makes a good background image. The key feature really is creating a, a, an image that you're creatively happy with. You're going to be working with this image for, for a couple of months as you um, put your object in there. So you want to pay attention to the lighting. You want to pay attention to color, to texture. You want an image with, that has some depth in it. Um, and then, of course, uh, a good dynamic range in, in the image. Other issues that come up are just um, creating a good composition, right? So again, using standard design principles. But also, you want to make sure that you're close enough to your subject to feature it. And a lot of times I'm seeing uh, images that where the camera angle is a fairly, um, you know, kind of standing height, eye level um, view. And, and while that works uh, plenty of times, there are times when, um, you know, changing the camera angle can actually make the image uh, a lot more interesting. The technical aspects of making the image are uh, important. So getting good exposure and having uh, the focus be um, where your object is. So if you're using a shallow depth of field, you want to make sure that where you're going to place your object, um, you know, the background is in focus. The last thing that you really have to do is use a tripod. And the reason for this is this isn't just a picture for creative purposes. This is a picture that you're going to use to put a, a, your model into. So you need to take a series of pictures that I, ideally will all match up pixel to pixel. They're most useful that way. So for instance, um, you'll take an image uh, with your prop or your model that you intend to build in there. And then you'll pull that prop out and take a clean plate. And there may be other pictures that you want to take as well um, for, for reference purposes. Either, um, you know, if there's objects casting shadows, you may want to pull them out as well to take a, um, an image where those shadows are not in the area where your object is going to be. Um, you may want to um, alter the lighting uh, as reference. So there's, there's lots of different um, images that you might find useful when you're putting this thing together in a composite and having a tripod is really um, uh, key in order to get everything to, to, uh, to line up and work out. Clear lighting direction and clear shadows are really uh, important in um, creating an image that you're going to place an object into. Uh, I've seen a, uh, a number of background plates where the shadows are so minimal that when you try to put your object in there, it's not really going to cast a shadow. And that's one of the key ways to kind of tie your object into your plate. If possible, you like to have multiple light sources affecting the area uh, that, you're, that you're shooting. And the reason for that is that you get a more complex image. And also, those additional light sources give you more to work with when you're pulling out the shape of your uh, your your model that you're putting in there. So um, that's a, that's that's a nice thing to have. It's it's not a must have, but it's nice to have. Um, and also um, look for ways that you can get your model to interact with the plate. I already mentioned the cast shadow, but if there's an object in in view that's also casting a shadow onto your where your object is going to be, that's a really cool way of kind of tying your uh, CG, you know, fake thing into the real 
image, um, shadows, reflections, um, any other kind of objects that might be either bouncing light or casting a shadow or an other, maybe the partially blocking your object. All those things uh, really can help you know, pull uh, your CG object into the, the real plate. And, and the last thing I'll say about that is that if you want to be using um, transparent objects, that really complicates things greatly and beyond sort of what we're going to talk about here. So uh, think twice if you if you have transparent objects, either that you want as part of your model or or in your plate that would be interacting with your model. Another uh, key thing that that you need to do so you need to make a pretty picture and then you kind of need to you know check these different things that can help you uh, tie your object into the plate and then. Um, you need to to take uh, camera data. So this is a real critical step because without this data, it's it's much more difficult to create a camera match. And um, for a still frame, you have more leeway. But uh, you know the point is to learn what it takes to make a good camera match. And so with that in mind, um, you really need to to, to uh, capture this data. So measure your your uh, your tilt. Um, you know the camera angle um, that's something that is really super helpful and then if you have any kind of dutching of the camera most times you would probably be um, not using that but if you do have it you want to measure that as well also you need to um, get as much data as you can about the scene and about the camera its location so at minimum you would like to get the camera height off the ground um, and then a camera distance to your subject or and also to other key features in the um, in the scene and and as much as you can measure other stuff in the scene and it helps you to kind of um, create that as much data as you have to lock uh, those things down there's less for the camera match um, to have to solve for so it, it makes it simple or simpler um, and then you also need to know about your camera. So you need to know which lens you're using. Um, if you're using a prime lens, it's easier, but um, also your sensor size. And if you're using, um, you know, if you're not using a full size sensor, then you need to be able to do that kind of calculation between what your lens uh, number, you know, is it a 50 millimeter, but you're using a smaller sensor, so it's actually acting like a, you know, a 65 or something. So you need to um, to know how to, to to manage that calculation as well. So so I have a uh, kind of taken some pictures around my house to to exam uh, illustrate some of these um, things we were just talking about, and I'm going to kind of run through them pretty quickly because you know these things um, are more useful if they're not uh, 20 minutes long. So. You know, I have the first picture here is just in my garage, and I've got the garage door open, and the sun is streaming in. And and the obvious problem is that it's really hard to get a good exposure when you have such strong sun. So so that's an issue uh, in this first image. When you're you know when you're making your model, you kind of want to put it in the scene. And so I'm using this little vase that I got, or a, a candlestick that I got. Um, at IKEA, I went there looking for a gray ball. They they don't, <laughs> they don't have gray balls, but they have uh, cheap candlesticks. So I got this cheap candlestick, and and kind of put it in my scene as a representative object of what somebody might build. Obviously, it's it's pretty simple, but um, I picked it because it was neutral. Although white is uh, in this image, you can see that it's bouncing quite a bit of light into the scene. But um, uh, so so again difficult to get good exposure so I've I've hung a, a sheet over the the area where the Sun's coming in and all of a sudden we have an image that's much more legible uh, exposure is much more um, reasonable and when we put our our object in there we can see what's that you know it just kind of fitting in there now I, I these examples are really not for creative uh, purposes but they're more for showing the technical problems that, that are common. So if you have direct sun, uh, you may have trouble with exposure. That's sort of the story there. Uh, 
Now I'm adding a second light, right? So the idea here is to bring in a second light. And if you compare the um, ones without the second light to the to the a photo with the second light in there, you can see that the vase or I'm sh uh, the the candlestick. It, it's a more clear the the shape of the candlestick. So this is the point of it that you can actually use that light to um, uh, bring out the the form of the object that you're making. And this is something that you would do if you were on set uh, or if you were you know photo uh, photographing um, a product shot or you know you've got actors in front of the the camera. You're going to light in order to get um, um, you know to bring out the the forms that that, that are there. So um, so this is no different, right? You're going to this is just a work light that I've got uh, in there just out of frame. And you know, here I show that you know can overdo it, right? So I bring the light in way too close. It really changes the whole uh, sense of the image and it it's kind of confusing because it's daylight plus it's got this strong incandescent light. So the point here is you can go too far. So just kind of watch it. Um, so I've got a couple more pictures here. This one I put in a bounce card underneath, you know, and so the question might be, what's your favorite? Well, it's really kind of up to you creatively. But if you compare some of the earlier shots where the light is controlled, but it, there's still a single light, to some of the later shots where there the secondary light is is bringing out some of the form, I think that you would, um, well, I would say that one of those is better um, because it. It's a it's a more complex and interesting image. So I have another set of images where I'm looking at. I've got this old pool table out in the garage again, and here um, using the same light setup, I kind of just turned around and um, and took a picture, or you know, artfully arranged the pool balls, of course, first. And um, you know, it's not a terrible picture, but I take the sheet down, and now I'm getting that direct sunlight, which is casting strong shadows, and immediately we've got a much more compelling, much more interesting image. So the idea here is just to illustrate that, you know, uh, controlling the light is good, but um, sometimes your strong shadows are something that you want. And we do have the exposure problem uh, where our whites are blowing out, but you might be able to kind of... Uh, find some middle ground there where you get the good shadows and you can control the um, amount of light to uh, help with the exposure problems. Right, so, uh, and then the other thing I did here was on the pool table I kind of used the, um, to illustrate the changing angle, how it can uh, uh, make a difference. In, in kind of how things look. So, you know, you've got this lower angle. Maybe you're seeing a little too much uh, busy stuff in the background. And as we go up, it looks uh, interesting. But at a certain point, the uh, images start getting, um, you know, kind of normal, regular, boring. Um, so then, and, and then you get higher still, and things start looking interesting again. So, again, up to you creatively to decide how you want to uh, handle camera angle but the point here is that you know a low angle or a high angle may be all that you need to turn something that's sort of um, um, gen generic into something a little more interesting okay and so um, the other thing that I illustrated here was focus you know, uh, have an image where my uh, candlestick is in focus and the background's a little soft and then where my background is a little sharper and my camel, uh, candlestick's out of focus. So the point there, you know, that's kind of uh, straightforward, but um, keep things in focus where you want to put your object. Um, and then I went out to my deck and, and uh, I had bought these... Um, these magazine boxes for my uh, son to put his homework in and they were kind of smelly so they were just sitting outside airing out and I walking around I think oh, that doesn't look too bad as a little location and you can I took this wider shot basically to, to illustrate two things one is you know I've got this crappy work light in there um, which is you know nothing fancy but it I'm using that to kind of bring in my secondary source and then on the other hand um, if I try to use an image where I'm this wide, you know, my object is just not going to be featured among all this other stuff that you see. So, again, this is the idea of making sure your your distance 
uh, you, that you framed up your subject well uh, so that it's featured in your in your in your image. Oops, going the wrong way there. So here's an image where I you know um, I've got my candle stick in there and I've got my junk in there, and it, it it's not bad. You know I don't I don't mind it. Um, I find that that light coming down feels a little unnatural in this setting, so I probably wouldn't have backed off on that a little bit. Um, but I just tried different things, you know, um, taking things out of the scene, putting other things in. One of the interesting things about this one is that the, the plastic gun is blocking part of the object. And so when I compare that, this one, to one where I've kind of moved it out of the way, I think that you would agree that it feels more natural when our object is sort of nestled in there rather than sort of... Um, uh, things cleared out to make a perfect spot for it. So, you know, sometimes you want that feeling of, you know, everything arranged just so, and other times you want it to feel a little bit more natural. So, that, again, it's up to you, but having an object block part of your model is not necessarily a, a bad thing. Right, and so then I turn the light off and you can kind of just compare and see the difference. And with the light on, the image is a lot richer um, with the light off, it feels pretty flat to me, actually. So, um, you know, there's probably some way to, to, to manage that, but, um, you know, between those two, I prefer the extra light on. Um, and then, you know, um, just, uh, you know, a, 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 an image and a clean plate. And you can see my tripod is not very good. <laughs> good. The, the, the image is shifting. So in order for this to really work, you'd have to go and line them up in the in the composite which is uh, an, an extra step that you might also have to do and I've tried uh, you know changing the background a little bit and you can see that um, you know sometimes the background really does uh, wreck the foreground but you guys are no doubt aware of that and then here's another obvious thing you know we're outside and so as the Sun moves the the nature of the image can change completely, right? I mean, this is basically the same location as, as some of the earlier shots, but it feels completely different because the sun is now in a different place. So if you're shooting and there's natural light coming in, you, you want to kind of time it for the time of day where it's going to be the most uh, creatively satisfying to what you're after. Um, I shot a couple of pictures of this uh, thing on my kid's bed just to show that ground plane uh, can can be an issue, right? So here this soft, uh, wrinkly um, blankets are not going to be a good ground plane because when I put my candlestick in there, it... Um, it, it moves everything, so that's a problem. And then if I really wanted to get all the bounce and stuff to, to uh, work correctly, I should really model all that stuff, and that's kind of beyond the scope of what we're really trying to do here. So um, be careful of the ground plane is the lesson there. And then I have this last set where basically, you know, the computer desk thing. And, and, and here's a, a uh, typically... Uh, busy and bad shot uh, to start with. Lots of junk that we don't really want to focus on. Um, and so I, I'm zooming in and I'm finding that sunlight is, is way too strong. So I, I throw in a... Uh, there we go. I throw in a card to kind of block the direct light. And I've got other lights on and, um, you know, I'm experimenting with... Uh, you know, uh, adding that sort of extra, I've got my work light now in there on the right, and I'm trying to find a good place for that, and I'm trying different angles, right? So the point here is just that, you know, in one location, with just a couple of different, um, you know, you, maybe there's a bounce card, maybe you've got a little lamp, maybe you've got something to block the sunlight, you know, that gives you a lot of control over the light, and between um, controlling the light and uh, controlling the framing and then you can move stuff around right you've got a really a lot to work with there to, to create a um, a plate that will work so in conclusion and, and I will say I don't really like any of those last ones so <laughs> I wouldn't use any of those but uh, it, they illustrate the point and in, conclu in conclusion would I, I just run through it real quickly um, 
you know, first thing you want to do is is make a picture that you're you're happy with that you like. Um, something that when you, you you know you have a model that you want to make, and then you also need a location to put it in. So um, make sure that your your camera angle features your model. Check your uh, exposure and your focus and your other technical issues. Um, look out for problems like a weird ground plane or uh, reflections or shadows. Um, I had a student who did a countertop and some things were reflecting and he found that he, he had to place the object between the two reflections because he didn't really have, um, hadn't really thought about it. And then when he went to try to put it where he really wanted it, the reflection was causing him all kinds of problems. So um, uh, it could happen to you if you're not looking out for it. Um, remember to collect your data. And then the last thing that I'll, I always mention is that you know, uh, if you have a location that you can return to, it's it's not a bad idea because you know, might find that that you want to shoot more reference or that you you messed up the focus or whatever, and you want to go back and do a reshoot or maybe a better time of day. Uh, you know, um, it, it come you you realize if you shot it at a different time of day, you would like it better. So, having a location that you have control over that you can visit. Or revisit to do reshoots is is a is a good idea. Um, not that many people in the class do reshoots, but but a couple of them have, and 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 it really does uh, make it easier. So so with that, um, good luck finding a a great location and uh, shooting some nice pictures. And thanks for listening. <laughs>